Peace. What it was, what it is, and what it will be. You know who it is. You know where you're at, man. Monks in the Temple. And if you want to be here, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, man. Like, unlike, leave a comment. But don't forget to hit that button. Become a part of the family. Become a subscriber. You become a monk. And if you have any requests, suggestions, or information regarding any of the groups that we review, all you got to do is hit us up at templeofthemonk at gmail.com. Man, it's Monk with the Q. Temple of the Monk at gmail.com. Monk with the Q. And don't forget to sign up for the website. The link is in the description below. Make yourself a profile, join the chats, join the forums, and if you would like to support this channel in any other way other than subscribing, we have a Patreon link as well. Agus D just dropped the new joint, man, and we are about to dig in, so if you're ready, I'm ready, let's do it. Ka Okay, so this is the new joint by August D, aka Sugar of the BTS rap line crew. And I've heard a lot about Sugar, and I did get to hear him as part of the rap line and was very impressed. Now, like I've said before, upon first listening of Sugar, I didn't think too much of him until I heard the earlier stuff and then found out some very dope information regarding their whole rap line. And you guys have seen my reactions to that, right? So, um, and these are reactions um, as, as far as what my, what my thought was on the rap line and arguably they are hip hop, period, okay? So I give, I give them, I definitely give BTS that credit. Um, so we're gonna check out Sugar because I ha I'm not too in tune with Sugar. I'm a big fan of RM, big. I've called him the Nas of Korea, period. And I'm a big Nas fan, like big. I just watched the documentary on him yesterday. Um, that you can find, I believe it's on Amazon, if you look on Amazon. And if you have Amazon Prime, you should check it out. I thought about doing a reaction to it, but I, <laughs> it's, it, you could watch it. If you have Amazon, you could watch it. Um, but it's, it's a dope documentary. And when I heard RM's deeper underground shit, arguably he's, without question, in my mind, he's the Nas of Korea. I've heard uh, a good amount of the MCs coming out of Korea, and he definitely, he definitely takes that title for me. Um, in any case, we're gonna check this out, man. I'm not gonna hold you guys out too long, so let's do this. Yeah. 
that flow again now he it was quick but it was smooth it was it was like a, it was like the calmest smoothest version of Busta Rhymes I've ever heard Jay Gucci, man, um, there are very few lyric videos that I watch. Jay Gucci is one of them, as well as U UT and uh, Zaddy. Um, those are the three main that you'll mainly see. So big up to Jay Gucci for dropping this. I believe him and Zaddy dropped theirs the same day because I was looking for Zaddy and I think I'd seen his. And so I added that to the list so I could check it out. So De, De, De Chita, I believe is how it's hard for me to hear because they're going so fast and with the music over it, I couldn't hear if the W was silent or not. So I wasn't sure. So I don't know if it's Deshwata or Deshita. Um, the W is very faint, it seems like, from what I heard on here, but you guys let me know because I know I have Korean uh, monks in here. Uh, so Deshwata. Okay, so we're going to check out the MV. I can say the lyrics were slightly deep for me so I didn't want to try to analyze anything if there was a story behind this and so I'm gonna end up making sure I check that out and there wasn't too much detail but I'm gonna see if I can find something regarding that because I believe there's something behind this entire mixtape that I want an understanding to but I can tell you it was dope his flows are nice and sugar has been underestimated by me because of my perception of him in BTS. But when I started doing the, the um, series with BTS and digging deeper more into what the group was about, what their, um, what their ambitions were, goals, dreams, things like that, missions, and what, the, the, you know, what they had to go through, I learned more about Sugar and J-Hope that I didn't know prior to that. Now, I would have still cut them, I would have still, um, I would have still sold them short if I didn't know any of that information. I was stuck on the RM because I, I was always tuned into RM, but not, not these guys. But I've learned, the little bit that I've learned has basically, not that they need my respect, they've got all the respect they need, they don't need mine, but it just gave me a whole different perception of what this rap line is about. Uh, I, I've said that, and, the, um, and a bigger respect for what this group has accomplished Regardless of whether I like their song or not, what they've accomplished is just is, is, is phenomenal. Not many MCs can do that. Not many MCs can go from here to here and still maintain, um, like I said, still maintain their soul or, or keep most of their soul. They may be able to put a little bit in there, but when you're held down by industry cats and the a and r or the a and r's or the, the labels that dictate what you should and shouldn't release based on popularity you know you kind of you kind of lose yourself a little bit in there um but with these guys not happy and not many not i don't know many people that have been able to do that you know what i mean have been able to pull that off some yes you know but not many not not many Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the, the video. And that's just my, that's just my observation on it. Okay, don't take that for like law, you know, like what it actually is. Um, there's, a lot more, there's a lot more to it than that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and check out the actual video and Agus D. So what I wanna, before I get into the video, what I wanna know is, is he Agus D when he's part of the rap line and Sugar when he's part of BTS? Or is it Sugar, AKA August D, across the board? 
um, just so I have an idea. Because I could take it as, in, in a good way, two different personalities, you know what I mean? And so I want to make sure that um, I have a good idea of what um, Agassi is, is doing as far as the two names, you know what I mean? So I, can, you know, so I have an understanding, because I, I want to make sure I, I understand the full depth of what, what, what's going on. Uh, because if there is something behind these mixtapes, as BTS does with their, with their catalog, you know, there's always something behind it, a storyline or something to say, and everything is connected. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm told. Everything is connected. So I don't want to lose, I don't want to be disconnected. You know what I mean? So that's why I said I'm not going to overanalyze this song, but it is a great song. You know what I mean? And I like it, and Sugar is a dope rapper. I still like RM <laughs> better, <laughs> but I, I'm just being honest. All right, so let's check this one out, man. Agassi, the MD. Okay, so we'll go ahead and check this one out, man. This is the MV for Agus D. And I'm gonna tell you right now, as you can see right here, <laughs> I'm pulling this up. And because I watch, I watch a lot of Korean action, actually Asian action films, and I love the classical, like, not classic, but traditional scenery, the, 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 um, the, the, the what do you call it, like the, the um, empire, the dynasties, the clothing, like all, all of that stuff that's traditional in Asia, particularly China, Japan, and Korea. Um, I just, I love the setup of those old, you know, the, the, the old, um, that old school stuff. So the scene right here, I'm gonna see what he does. And I did wanna say about the music, the way he put those, um, the way he put the music together to sound like something very traditional and yet throw a beat behind it. And other, I've seen other, like I've seen Raja Kumari do it, Divine, um, as far as India, I've seen it a lot with a lot of the India um, artists, whether they were rapper or R&B. That's laundry. Let me close that. Um, as far as that, same thing with African, same thing. I've seen it done with a lot of cultures. So it's nice to see in hip hop that this is being done. Um, I've seen rappers use like what may seem to be like Asian um, accents within music, you know what I mean? Um, who weren't Asian and that was cool, but I, I can't say whether or not that was authentic because it could be some like, you know, what we might call whitewash version of Asian culture. And you know, we want to stay away from that. We want pure, unadulterated, culture across the board, no matter what it is, whether it's whether you're from Europe, Asia, Africa, it's Latin America, we want to make sure it's pure. Okay, so we're going to check this out. Sorry for talking so much. We're going to go ahead and check this out, man, and see what kind of visuals Agassi is going to give us, man. This scene almost, and, and although it's not Korean, if you've ever seen the, not The Last Kingdom, oh, Hero with Jet Li, there's a scene where he walks out of the temple like that. Well, I don't know if that's a temple, let's say palace. He walks out of the palace like that, except there's like thousands of guards out there <laughs> ready to like basically arrow him down. And he walks out, the doors open, and the scene looks just like that. And I love the cinematography. The, the way it's set up, the whole cinematography just reminds it me. Again, this makes me want to just go in the house after I'm done and watch a, watch a drama. And I still need to see Hawara. I haven't seen Hawara yet. Look at that. Okay, tell me, please tell me the Kinjas are in this. Cause this would be a perfect song for Kinjas to be in. Perfect. Just like it, it it'd be dope. It would be dope. Yeah. Oh. Ah, this is 
Started a riot, dude. <laughs> Look at me. Dude's like, what the fuck, man? You're not gonna say, you're not gonna say, excuse me? <laughs> I guess it's still going like, just, I don't care. I don't even know what's happening right now. All of a sudden, he just causes mayhem. <laughs> time period is this and he just busts through in a whip Like, that's literally like some the it, it, and Busta Rhymes has he Busta Rhymes always spits super fast. Um, I wouldn't know who to top. I don't know if I I don't know who would be quicker him or Eminem. But Bust, I'm Busta Rhymes been doing. But then again, there's Twister. You know what I mean? You still have Bone Thugs. You know what I mean? You still have those cats. Um, uh, what's his name? Not Jay. Who do I think about? Um, uh, ah, my God, Jazzo. Jazzo is another spitter like that. If y'all don't know who Jazzo is, basically Jay Z rose up under Jazzo. Um, I believe they still work together. I'm not sure, but um, you've heard Jay Z do it, but you've heard Twister do it. You've heard Jazzo do it. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of cats out there. There's some West Coast dudes too that are very good at it. I believe a couple of the dudes from Freestyle Fellowship who spit like that. Um, crazy, but. Um, yeah, it's like Busta Rhymes. And Busta Rhymes, I believe, is spit like that before. Like, you know what I mean? But his is so smooth. It's like, it's like he's just like, oh, just relax.
sugar have um martial arts background? One of them does. One or two of them BTS members do, right? I can't remember who though. <laughs> Okay, so some gangster stuff right there. I don't know what was behind that. Again, I'm not gonna try to overanalyze that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that unravel uh, and get some more information regarding that because this whole mixtape, I believe there's supposed to be something behind it. If I'm, if I'm correct, there's supposed to be something behind it, a storyline of some sort, um, which I don't think I would expect anything from less from them than that. And I think that's dope. So because there's a mixtape, and I was gonna throw in one of the songs. I have the entire list for this 2020 mixtape. But rather than do that, because there's an MV for this one and no MV for the others, what I plan on doing is a listening segment, all right? And it'll be a live chat. I will be in the chat with anybody who is in love with BTS. Any army, I don't care who you are. If you wanna be there, I'm gonna go ahead and do a listening joint for that and we'll do that I don't want to do it Saturday, man, because my girl is doing her thing. Anitra is doing her thing on Saturday. She's in it. So I'm going to do it for Sunday. We're going to do a, a, a August D 2020 mixtape listening, um, live chat listen. Um, live chat. I would do a live on it, but I don't want to take any chances with that. I think we should be okay if I do a live, uh, live chat listen like I did with the, like I did with the concerts for Shiny Taemin, Jong Yoon. So uh, let's do it like that, an entire mixtape listen where I kind of can interact with you guys and get an idea of the story because I don't want to throw anything in. I can tell you though, upon listening, I really like his rap flow. The lyrics are, the lyrics are on point, man. And it's, when a story is being told, if I'm only getting a small piece of it, I would hate to ruin it and make myself look like a fool by trying to analyze something that I have no knowledge of. And so, but other than that, man, he, get, he definitely um, is, a, is a respected MC. He does this thing, his production is on point. I see him working with a lot of people. I see people all of a sudden coming out of, all over the place and sugar is out there doing this thing man you can't be mad at them for that you know what i mean um i just hope that they don't well you know what i can't even say that i hope that they treat him with the respect that everybody else does because i think sugar is in not only a position but a place in his mind where he knows what he could do and he's in control you know what i mean he's in control of destiny so he can say you know yeah you know blah, blah, blah. it's like it's like he says here, like, you know, all the other stuff doesn't matter. I know who I am. You know what I mean? Like, it, this, it's me. The other stuff won't, won't even matter. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I have no doubt that BTS, man, is in total control of their destiny. Nobody has to tell BTS or tells BTS what to do. BTS uh, pretty much is in control of everything that they handle. And I don't think he would do anything that he couldn't handle. Just my opinion on that. So Agassi, man, doing his thing. Uh, I really like this joint, and I'm really anxious to hear the rest of this. So this Sunday, okay, this Sunday, we're going to do a live chat. Uh, yeah, a live chat, and actually there'll be two of them. There'll be one for EXO because I have an EXO, uh, an EXO concert that I'm doing, and there'll be another one for the Agassi mix, the 2020 mixtape. Now, um, because I will be coming across other mixtapes for other artists, if you would like the same thing to happen with the RM, with J-Hope, if they have mixtapes out that I'm not sure about yet, I know, I, I know RM does. If you would like me to do something like that for say not just one or two songs, but the entire mixtape series for that particular mixtape, let me know and I'll hold out, do an entire mixtape. And remember, send it to the email. You can put it in the comments so I can see it, but send it to the email so that I know what I'm looking for and what it is I'm going to be doing so that we can make sure because the army, I'm gonna give all the fandoms something. You know what I mean? I've, I've done a lot for Shiny because it is a great group. I do love those cats. I'm doing the same thing with EXO. 
and um, trying to get one for NCT. I need to get the girl group some point. I just got hit up about GOT7, which I did do one video on. I need to do, it, it's, there's a lot, and I want to get everything done. So um, with that being said, also with, um, uh, I know I get a lot of people that subscribe, right? They subscribe to the channel. And what happens is I think we uh, have people that say, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribing um, specifically for BTS. I'm subscribing. That's cool. I, 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 want you, I want you to subscribe and enjoy, the, um, enjoy all that the channel has to offer. I just want you to understand that not every day am I doing this group, this group, this group. There may, be a, there may be two days in a row where you might see BTS and then three or four days, maybe even five days pass because of all the groups that I'm doing. Um, and it's not because so much the request. I'm getting the request because I love all these groups. And that's why I said I need to get the girl groups on point because I'm not doing a lot of the girl groups. And it, that's what I really like. I really like a lot of the girl groups as well. So I really need to make sure I shine on them as well. So, if you're an Army or an N-Citizen or XOL or Shaw, wherever you are, which I am all, <laughs> um, a baby, but all, be patient. I, I'm doing every single one of those groups. It's just they may be spread out a little bit because there are so many, okay? So I don't want you to think, oh, man, you know, you forgot about I didn't forget. It's just I want to make sure that everybody gets it because right now the ones with the most videos are XOL, Shiny and BTS, if I'm correct, those three groups have the most um, videos out right now because those were the main three. NCT actually um, should be up in there too. But I, I, I get, I don't get. It's not that I don't get a lot of requests for them, but you know, a lot of stuff's been going on. So I want to make sure, Charlie. And Oh, I don't know what that's about. Um, in any case, in any case, so you know, I just want to make sure that you understand. None of the groups are being forgotten about. It's just I'm trying to make sure I get you know as much of everything out there and the requests that were given to me in the past. I need to catch up with those too. But send it. Make sure you send it to the website so that it can be acknowledged. Okay? Because I'll see it in the comments, but I'll lose it in the comments because the comments are popping in a lot, especially right after I drop something. Okay? So uh, for all you, everybody that's subscribed, I really appreciate your sus your subscription. I want you to stay, but I just want you to, to know that if I'm doing any particular group that you're uh, a fan of, especially if it's your main fan, I mean your main group, your biased group. You may not see something every single day, but you will see something. And usually I cover, I try to cover everything. You don't see too many new videos from these groups. A lot of times I go back because I want to do the new stuff, which I don't mind doing and will do, but I'm also going to be going back. So you're going to be looking at almost everything from each group library. That's why I said this, this channel, well, there's no way we're going to die down. There's too much to do. There's too much to do in all aspects, not even just Korean genre, but just everything. I mean, everything. So um, with that being said, y'all know what to do, right? Okay, hold up, hold up, stop. Before we even get to the end of this, DKDKTV did drop an explanation video for Sugar, aka August D's new joint, De Chita. De Chita. De Chita. De Chita. De Chita. De Chita. Something like that. Anyway, anyway, he dropped it. Big up to DKDKTV, man, the go-to for explanations from what I'm being told. So I did put them on subscribe and hit the bell. And sure enough, I got the notification the day I was going to actually put the review out for this joint. So we're going to go ahead and connect this on there. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do it. another hard-hitting mixtape titled D2. The first August D album released in 2016 focused on the tough time Sugar faced when he was a teenager. Uh, Sugar's at a very different place now. He's much older and he's much more successful and this album focuses on the changes of his feelings after becoming one of music's biggest superstars. It's a very honest album and my personal favorite off of this 
is the title track Techita. It's an ultimate flex track slash warning slash reminder with tons of historical references. So let's take a look into it. So there's a chance we might see this entire video again. Uh, so we're gonna watch. We're basically gonna watch it again because I know with them when I watched the, the Satori rap, I believe they stopped in between to give the explanation. So for those of you that don't mind that, that's cool. If you want to just hear my thoughts on the explanation, just go ahead and fast forward through. But I don't mind watching this again because it was a dope song. <laughs> Techita is Korean traditional marching music that was played when kings or royalty were moving about or important guests would visit, as well as when army would be marching. Uh, there are two main characters in this music video, a king shiga and a bottom class shiga. We can see that the king shiga is a tyrant. He has everyone kneeling down with the faces down in the ground and he beheads people who have complaints in this scene. You can see the Shimungo here. People in the Joseon dynasty would hit this drum if they had something that they've been wronged. They'd hit this drum and the king or someone up in the hierarchy would come and sort out their problems. Except here, King Shiga is killing the people who have such complaints and issues. But the bottom class Shiga, with the help of BTS and ARMY represented by the six other men and a woman in the scene, starts a coup. He drives up a car with the men representing BTS and also a cute painting of Bang PD. By the way, this painting has its origins in a Jungkook drawing of Bang PD. It's pretty funny. The King Sugar sees this and gives a thumbs down and captures the bottom class Sugar. The King Sugar wants to kill him and does this graceful sword dance, which apparently Sugar learned in two days. Meanwhile, bottom oh, class Sugar Oh, okay, so he. I, I still, I, you can still answer the question because I was wondering if he knew martial arts because that scene, he was very fluent with the sword. And if I'm correct, I believe a, one or two members do know martial arts. I just don't remember which ones. Um, but he learned that in two days. Wow, I thought that was like, oh man, these, these, these kids, man, I'm, and I say kids, I'm sorry, they're like half my age, but these young gentlemen, they pick up on like the choreography I've learned that they picked up on very quickly. At least a few of them do, if not all of them. And the fact that he's able to pick up swordplay, because I've taken martial arts and the problem in Kempo when I took Kempo was my bow staff <laughs> skills were horrible. When I took Kajikali, which is Filipino martial arts, I took that for five years. I had no problem with a double stick with their screaming sticks um, or rattan with the rattan sticks. But the bow stick was a problem, and the sword I was, I was scared of. Knife, no problem. Swords, I was scared of. So Sugar gets big props for that, because if he learned that in just two days, he put in work. Blindfolded and tied down, starts headbanging, singing Techita. <laughs> Remember how I told you that Techita was played when kings were about or when the army would be marching? The bottom class Shiga singing this is an announcement that he is actually the real king. He feels like he's the king. The people under the king, the very ones that were kneeling to him in the beginning, are now joining Shiga, headbanging with him. Yeah. This Techita is also for them. These middle people are armies marching together with the bottom class Shiga. At the end, the executioner who was supposed to take down the bottom class Shiga actually frees him and gives him a gun. Bottom class Shiga grabs this and shoots the king. I think the MV and the song is a metaphor for BTS and ARMY taking down the existing system and the ruling forces of the industry. 
the King Sugar represents the system, the existing system, the few powerful companies that had control over the industry before BTS came to the scene. Bottom class Sugar is Sugar himself in a small company with basically nothing, as if he was born into a bottom class and winning the people over, eventually taking down the king with BTS and armies. I think Suga picked the perfect motif to convey his message. And if you look at the historical references, you'll be more amazed at how clever this all is. Well, this single verse has a lot to unpack, but let's just start with this line. The Joseon Dynasty, which is most likely where this song is set in, had a strict class system where there was a heavy discrimination based on which class you were born into. Slaves were not even considered human. They would be traded in cases their owners didn't have enough money, and they were thought of more as just things. Think about the mistreatment that BTS received earlier on in their careers. They faced heavy discrimination due to them being from a small company and they were mistreated. So it's easy to understand why Sugar called himself a slave here. Slaves in Joseon were almost completely blocked off from advancing to higher classes. So for a slave to become a king is basically impossible. But Sugar's saying he made it happen. <laughs> the following line is a reference to Kwang Hegun, the king of Joseon dynasty in the 17th century. He developed paranoia while in power and notoriously became violent and reckless. Hence the line, Berserk Tiger, Kwang Flow. But I think there are more reasons Suga referenced Kwang in the lyrics, especially if you consider what his life was like. Kwang Hae-gun had a very roller coaster of a life. Originally, he was a war hero, defending Joseon against the Japanese invasion of 1592, one of the biggest wars in Korean history. His father, who was then king, had fled when the war broke out, and the 18-year-old Prince Kwang Hae led Joseon troops in the battlefield. Rarely at this time did kings or to-be kings go out into the battlefield themselves. So Kwang Hae fighting with the people won their hearts over, and there were movements to throne him as the king instead of his father. The father felt threatened by this, so he made a lot of political efforts to stop Kwang Hae from gaining influence. Eventually, Kwang Hae became stuck between two large political powers, and this struggle eventually made Kwang Hae go paranoid and become violent and reckless. Ultimately, he was dethroned after a coup. I think Suga somewhat relates to Kwang Hae as he himself had been through a tough adolescence, having to go out into the battlefield at an early age, just like Kwang Hae did. He was an idol with no money, from a small company stuck in an industry dominated by big corporations. When Suga started winning battles and gaining power, he must felt a lot of efforts from the existing big powers to keep him away from the throne, like what Kwang Hae experienced from his father when the people wanted him to become the king. <laughs> Suga mentions putting his past in the rice chest. For many Koreans, the word Tiju or rice chest is strongly connected to the tragic story of Sado Seja, which involves him dying in a rice chest. Sado Seja was the son of then King Yeongjo, and his father was extremely harsh on him, humiliating him and scolding him in front of others at a very early age. This became so severe that Sado Seja attempted to commit suicide a few times, but even then, he was treated terribly. He developed what modern doctors diagnose as bipolar disorder and began acting very violently. Eventually, the king ended up hating Sado Seja so much that he ordered Sado Seja to go into a rice chest. Sado Seja went in, and he was stuck inside for 8 days and eventually starved to death. Sado Seja had a troubled life, filled with being humiliated and mistreated, and mental health issues just not being understood. Suga has been pretty open about his mental health issues he had when he was growing up, and I think he relates to Sado Seja. He sees himself in it. He says he's putting his past in the rice chest. It's a declaration that he's putting the old troubled yungi, the Sado Seja yungi, behind and looking at what's ahead of him. <laughs> You 
In the second verse, Suga focuses more on how he's now on the throne and he's better than everybody else. Suga directly name drops Pang PD and also takes a shot at other artists who do drugs thinking that they write better music while they're high. I won't name any names here, but I'm sure you can think of an artist or a few artists for that matter that will be at the butt end of this. Some in bigger companies, in fact. Ooh, boy! The diss aside, this line is also a glimpse into Pang PD's relationship with BTS. In a typical company, it'd be extremely difficult to even mention the name of your boss this openly without putting the honorifics Nim. Especially considering how much a veteran and how much older Pang PD is compared to BTS. However, Suga name draws Pang PD as if he was his friend. We can sense that there is a very close bond and assume that Pang PD is very democratic with BTS. The fact that Suga is talking of Pang PD so casually is a flex of its own to others, as it's a sign that BTS has become so big and valuable to the company that he's at level with Pang PD. Now this is an interesting bit. Here Suga uses the Korean word Hyunta. Hyunta is an interesting Korean slang that is used all around the internet. Directly translated as wise man's time, it is a word to describe the feeling you get right after you've ejaculated, yes ejaculated, and you feel no more sexual urges and you have a moment of clarity in your brain. You feel still, <laughs> present, and sometimes disappointed that the short moment of satisfaction was all you got and you worked so hard for it. This slang originated from Japan but it has become a staple in Korean everyday language and it is widely used in everyday life outside of sexual situations. Usually in situations when you finally got what you dearly wanted and you wonder, that was it? Shuga saying he's feeling extreme hyunta because he has it all. He has money, he has clothes, he has everything he ever wanted. And there's sorry, nothing. I say that there's so much information here, I don't want to forget some of this. The, the, I, I, the, this, puts, this puts the respect level of their lyrics, as simple as they may seem to be here, on a whole higher level. I just want to say that. I'll say the rest later, because I don't want to... I want to hear all of it. No one above him. While this could be considered a small cry for help, I think within the context of this song, it's more of a hard flex. He's saying, others can only dream of what I have, but now I got everything and I feel bored and disappointed. But you won't know how I feel because you never had any of this. BTS has been on the top for the past few years, absolutely dominating, with a level of popularity that has never been seen in K-pop before. They're so dominant that it's sometimes easy to forget that they too had humble beginnings. In fact, more humble than most top artists out now today. They had to fight their way through discrimination, mistreatment, and humiliation. Techita is a reminder, a reminder that this was where they started, and they took that system down. And it's also a warning that they had the resilience and the force to go through all of this, to go from slave to king. If you all estimate more videos like this, supporting us on patreon.com slash dkdktv helps us a lot. These explained videos get copyright claimed, thus we make no money off of them, zero cents, so please consider supporting us on patreon.com slash dkdktv. For just a cup of coffee a month, you can get exclusive content and also help us continue our careers. And until next time, bye bye. DKDK TV, man. Big props to you guys, man. I love you guys, man. For real. And I've only seen a few of your videos. Like, I was watching one yesterday on uh, what is the new group Secret Number that came out about the Indonesian, the new, the Indonesian K pop artist, the first one. And uh, a couple of other videos, and, and I've also the Satori rap one also, man. They, they, they definitely put out some good videos, and this was really helpful. And I won't make it too long, but the fact that Agus D, or any of the members for that matter, and I said when I watched it that I was going to be careful about how I analyzed it because I wasn't sure, but I knew there was going to be a deeper meaning. I just didn't realize how deep that was going to be. In one sentence, Sugar's able to deliver history not only about himself 
but history in line with history of his country and his heritage. So it's, it's baffling because if I looked on the surface, if I didn't watch this and I looked on the surface at just the lyrics and read them, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's a simple rap. If, if, if literally just coming into BTS and looking at the lyrics and not digging this deep in and looking at it, I would be like, oh, okay, it's cool. It's nothing, it's nothing lyrical. There's no, there's no wordplay. It's nothing fancy about it. Because in, in Western culture with rap, you know, you think of things that are, you know, pen, a tubular shaped object used by certain cats for a particular project to spit in a mic. from microphone, the Fostex, a system built for those who killed an initiated bomb threat to turn convict, a resident of a maximum security. That's complexity right there, right? And that's what a lot of MCs look for here. By the way, that is my rap. That's, a, that's what a lot of MCs look for. We look for that complexity, you know, something, something that's in there. You know what I mean? That's, you know, a lot of words mushed together, but yet have some, they mean something. There's something behind it. Except we squeeze a bunch of words in to explain the wordplay, to explain the story, whatever that story was. That what I just spit to you was explaining, I, I told you guys before, was explaining my love for writing. Right? The pen, a tubular shaped object used by certain cats for a particular project to spit in the mic and the microphone, the Fostex. Me recording those lyrics that I wrote into the mic and then mic into the recording machine. So you see how complex that is, right? But with, with August D, the, the lines are simple to us, but behind those lyrics, behind those little five word sentences is so, such a vast meaning. I mean, I, I would have never guessed that watching this. There's no way I would have gotten all of that out of that one simple line. And that's what it looks like. On the surface, it's simple. But he just, uh, with a few words, he could put a few words in there that have such a large meaning behind it that when you watch something like this, you're like, oh my God, dude. Fuck the, fuck the complexity. He just ripped the shit out of the MC. And unless you knew anything like that, you'd be like, oh, that was whack. But looking at this, and again, big up to DKDK TV, looking at this, the, those raps you guys see sometimes people spit, those little whack ass raps you see on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot, whatever, you know, Facebook, and these whack raps that have absolutely no many, meaning other than getting high fucking chicks, shooting people, and doing drugs, and people are giving them fire emojis for that whack shit. This right here, doesn't get a fire emoji. This gets a freaking forest fire. This gets straight up California sized forest fire emoji. I, there's not, I mean, there's nothing else I can say. There's nothing else I can say. While I'm sitting here looking at RM and the complexity that RM has, and even in RM, there's not too much complexity, but he jams, he, he jams a lot of words together. That's RM style, and I love that. But now I look at this, and I, and I thought Sugar was a dope MC after I figured out, after I went back and dug deeper into, the, into Sugar and J-Hope's you know, history, well, BTS in general, and learning about the rap line. Sugar had already had my respect when I listened to some of the underground jams that he did with um, RM and J-Hope. But when I look at Ditch Top, it's cra it's, it, 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 it basically, I just learned, and I've been an MC since I was 11, I've just learned that behind the simplest sentences, behind the simplest lyrics can be a whole deeper meaning behind that. And that's not, that doesn't even go for just Korean uh, rap, but that can go for anything to dig deeper, unless it's just blatantly stupid, which usually, you know, right? We have artists out here who are very deep when it comes to, to, to rap, and they do things like this, um, but it's in English, so I, I get it. I understand the metaphors. I get the metaphors, right? Because historically and culturally, I can relate to that. I can't relate to this because I'm not Korean, but it's so much fun to learn, and it's so dope to see that from the from the wordplay that he put on here, as simple as it may seem to some of us, or maybe even most of us who don't understand Korean, that deeper meaning behind it, if you're an MC, you have not, undisputably, you can't, you, you can't deny that this is the dopest, one of the dopest songs that, I've, that you've ever heard.
if you are able to understand it, if you watch this and understand how he put those words together in such a way that he can put out one word yet that has like a historical meaning behind it. And then not only put that there, but relate his life to it at the same time in just two sentences. Like that's, that's talent right there. Like that's, be, that's thinking. That's, that's, that's him thinking on a higher level and putting it at a, and putting it at a level with we can look at it and be like, okay, but we still have to kind of, you know what I mean? You, you still have to think. You still have to kind of do your homework on it. So, again, big up to DKDK TV. Man, I'm going to really be, every time you guys putting something up, I'm going to make sure I pay attention. If not, look, go look for it, especially when it's in regards to BTS. And I don't know what other artists you guys do, but um, I'm sure the monks will let me know. Other than that, man, dope, great job. You guys are amazing. Seriously, amazing. And for all the monks out there that, you know, have put in your request and everything for all of these, all of these groups and giving me the information at the email <laughs> so that I can look it up, I thank you guys also because without that, man, the, the, the way we do reviews here on this channel would just be like every other channel. And we don't, we don't want that. We want to give people entertainment, education, and, 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 and engagement interaction so you know that that's what that's what i have to say about that so now we can get up out of here subscribe like share leave your comments below let's grow together share knowledge and build community and until the next time i'll see y'all later peace Spot, getting plenty props cause I'm weak Cali any hot till my body rides And running up I spray them down like the body shop Finger bangs just with four fingers like karate chop I'm bragging more than you imagine to the non-factors and sagging Cause we still getting spelling everything backwards Sometimes I forget lines like gold-plated actors So I guzzle a 50 act till I regurgitate